In this demonstration, I'm just going to look at a couple of uh, track uh, tools um, and the combination with super alignment IP method. So as you can see, there's uh, an existing main line. So we've got the left rail and the right rail, and then there's an par existing passing track. So there's two more rails, and then there's a, a bad order spur. And it goes for about... Uh, what's the length here? 800 meters, so we're looking to put in a, a basically a similar length passing siding to the north. So the first tool I want to talk about is the uh, center line creation tool for the rail. So if we go to design, track, calculate center line, and this little panel is pretty nifty. You click your left rail, click your right rail, and hit process, and it creates a couple of models. But the first one I want to show you is the center line. And if I was to show that in profile view, we can see a uh, we can see it's got a vertical and, and generated a center line every twenty meters or so. And what what that generally will try to do is it will pick a, a level for the right, right rail. And pick a level for the for the um, for the left rail, and basically uh, interpolate between the two to generate a center line. So, if we've got a curve, um, you might have to double check uh, that you're picking that low rail um, before you decide what the center line is, um, because it basically will average out average out the two, I believe. The track center line command uh, generates a super string or a 3D polyline. Um, but that doesn't really give you my grade information, um, and also I can't really see uh, if this if this this uh, string is truly straight or this track's truly truly straight. So what I tend to do is I tend to create a super alignment and, and place it over the top of the rail to to basically work out um, you know what I mean what your true radius would have been or your correct grade would have been. I mean it, it might not make uh, too much sense, um, but if you're doing say like a 150 kilometers of duplication, um, you'll find that this track center line command, just, it's just a start point, starting point. Um, so what I do is I create super alignment and put it under existing rail. I'll call that uh, center line main and I'll place my alignment and, and then I'll basically see if it's straight in particular, where I'm placing my my uh, switches and my turnouts, but I mean, you see there, it's it's uh, I mean, 100 100 mil, 83 mils of uh, of center line, which is pretty big um, in the rail world. So I'll then put in uh, my my vertical geometry for the super alignment. Um, obviously, it's a, a a best case fit. But um, but uh, yeah, there's a couple of useful tools in there that you might find useful to you, like um, grade intersect. So this one here, we got 0 0.835 and a uh, a zero or 0 0.818. So there's a tool in here called intersect VIP grades. Pick your two, pick your three, type in your 835, and Drop in your 1.8, and that's my VIP of the two grades. Um, I mean, you could also just extend to sort of work out where whereabouts it is if you wanted to. And the old-fashioned way for building, uh, designing railways, um, I guess in 12D or civil 3D, was to sort of draw your horizontal alignment, work out where you wanted to place your turnouts and sort of draw, draw it in. Um, and I'll just quickly show you that method first. So create super alignment, go design rail, and we'll go PT, uh, we'll hit create. And basically, we had to basically draw IPs in first using CAD, uh, and then basically place, place our IPs in for the track. Um, so I'd draw a line here. I draw another line here. I'd offset that by um, 
8 meters or something, or 5 meters. I know this one was 8 meters, so I'm just going to do that. Draw your other IP. You know, and then put in your curves. But for almost all rail design, I'd actually recommend using the element method um, for in, inside the super alignment. And I'll, show, I'll, I'll explain, I'll explain what that is, and explain why it's a lot better um, shortly. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to look at the uh, turnout place command in um, 12D. So um, the terminology quickly. I mean, I'm going to call this a turnout. Some people call them points. Um, depends whereabouts in the world you are. But uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a, it's sort of a block of that, of a 1 in 10 turnout um, on the main line first. And I'm just going to show you how to do that now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create our turnouts. Um, so we go down to this design, track, turnouts and create. And if you say using, uh, say, common manufacturers, they'll give you a set of um, drawings to use and you can sort of work out your lengths and your angles or basically the infrastructure owner um, will give you a set of angles and turnouts to use and you just got to sort of create create it to match you know what I mean the standard that they give you you know I mean like your lengths your angles and your radiuses and stuff so that's your first point I mean I won't go into too much detail about how to do that but um, I'll do it in another video but basically I'm going to place this turnout on um, the super uh, on the existing main line and I'll do that now so we go to turnouts, turn out place, and it brings up this toolbar, and it's a function, which is a good thing, so I go down to, um, I give it a name, so TPO1, and then here I'll pick that number 10, and I mean, sometimes the terminology is a bit confusing, but this front end is sort of where that first weld would be, um, it's sort of a two meters between, um, you know, in your point of switch and sort of the first weld. And that's the front end. This TOS is your switch point. Um, K main is your theoretical inter intersection point between your your main line and your diverge. And then these sort of K loops. It's the same same thing, but it's basically place, placing on a on the straight and then the diverge. And I'll show you what I mean by that. But um, so basically, I'll create I'll create the center line model. I find it pretty useful as well. Um, and then basically, I'll pick the super alignment that I created earlier and give it a I want to go by chainage actually and so I'm going to place it here and then I'm going to go turn place it place turn out oh let's go so now when I turn on my track uh, rails, oh, where are they? Uh, rail models, rail models. It basically placed that turnout for me, and at the moment you can see that I've put it in the wrong spot, um, and because it's a function, uh, I'll change the chainage, for example, to to say down here. I hit place again, and it will basically re reset, reset, reset it for me. Um, just say we wanted it to go to the right. I could change it to the right, but I don't. I want it back on the left, so I'll press play. Uh, I'll turn on my center line models, and basically what I'll do now is I'm going to look at the the part method, um, and basically what this does, it sort of takes away the need to um, to first draw Kogo points to work out IPs, um, but also has lots of other functions which uh, you have to sort of explore yourself. But for this one, I'm just going to show you um, a pretty simple process, which is just placing um, parts. So for the first part, I'm going to, I'm going to do this, um, this straight between the point of switch. Uh, zero, zero. Uh, I'm then going to go to another part. And this one here, I'm going to do the this 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 angle. And I'm going to pick two points. Oh, that one there, zero zero. 
And I'll show you where it starts to become really useful, especially in railways, is for this one here, um, I know that I'm grabbing a, this center line and I know I'm going on this bearing. Point to point, that's the one. Zero, zero. And where it comes really useful, it's got this offset command, and if you get, click um, your eight in there now, um, it basically will uh, set it for me. And if I need a curve in between the two, I basically will place uh, a floating curve in between the two. So make that 200. Wrong place. Next one. Send down. Three hundred. And I'll then. I'm now going to go to the other end and place that second turnout down here. So I'll go design turnouts. Place. Let's go TPO two this time. Change the function. Uh, I'm going to change the chainage to somewhere around here. I'm going to reverse it. Um, so I'm going to reverse, the reverse it. So I'll just turn on those catch strings. Oh, it's on. I'm then going to go to the right hand side. The chainage is a little bit off, so I'm going to bring it to say here. I'm then going to bring in the straight for the diverge of that turnout. So I'll pick that bearing. And Bearing on the straight. And radius there, 300. Oh, wrong place. Let's go up a bit. And I mean, and there's my alignment. I mean, it, it might seem like there's more steps involved. Um, but from parts, you can place computators. And also, if I was to change, say, that offset of that middle line, and I wanted it to be 5 meters instead of 8, it's very simple just to change the 5. And it resets all my curve information. And if I had computators on it and I had the next alignment over, it would move with it. Um, so it's a very, very useful command. And But this video is getting a bit long, so I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll keep the demonstration of computators for, for, another, for another day.